Welcome to the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Studio. Today, you are going to be learning to make your own bales. I'm Patty. I'm a jewelry designer here, and I'm going to show you five different bales that you can make at home that give your piece that really personalized custom look. Get our email newsletter for beading news, sale announcements, new product announcements, and more. Link is in the description below. The first bale is a figure eight bale. Then we have a fold over bale, a triangle ice pick bale, a closed jump ring bale, and a hammered rolled bale. To make this bale, I'm going to take about 14 inches of wire off the roll. Then I'll take my element here, and I'm gonna create the bale around the element. Thread it through, leave a nice tail up here. and just create a figure eight. So you make a loop over the top and go back through the center. And we'll do this three times. Then you want them roughly the same size. Now, I'm going to take my top tail, bring it around the outside and go around twice and snip that off kind of in the center where those loops meet. and take the bottom tail and wrap it right over those a couple of times, cut it off where those loops meet. And there you have your great messy veil. Now you can spread those loops apart till it looks how you want it to look. So you can end up with something very kind of neat or something a little more open and organic. In this really unique fold over bale, um, you can use all kinds of different components to do this. Here I have this little chandelier component. It just needs to be thin and malleable. Um, first, I'm gonna take my component and some mandrel pliers. These are Weber mandrel pliers. And I'm just going to kind of center the mandrel plier and just wrap it around just like that. Then I'm gonna fit my uh, wing in there and just make sure that it's kind of touching. And now I can look at my component. I've got this little piece kind of sticking up. I'm just going to flatten that down with my round nose. Just finish the shaping. Make sure it's nice and rounded and pleasing to the eye. Then I'm simply going to put the head pin through the hole in the back of the component, put that through my wing, make sure this the side of the wing that I want showing is in the front here, through the other side, just like that. And then I'm going to use the tail of the head pin to make a spiral. So round nose pliers, just gonna grab the end and roll that in. And then when you're making a spiral, cut off the last few millimeters. Gonna bring that around and grab some nylon jaw pliers and roll that up all the way until you cannot roll anymore. Then I am just going to make sure that the component is squeezed fairly tight against the piece. Make sure it's rolled up all the way and then take your chain or flat nose plier and just pop that downward. So the spiral sits just how you want it to. And there you have your great little fold over bale. This great little triangle ice pick bale is one of the simplest bales to make. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take off a few inches of wire. You don't need that much, but you wanna be able to hold on to it. So a little extra wire is good. Next, I'm just going to put that directly in the center of the plier. Just wanna get it halfway in there. And then I'm just going to push it around, push it around again, and we'll crisp up those corners in a minute. But this gives us the perfect size, basic shape. And then I need to open it up and bring that wire through on the other side and just kind of clamp it down. 
And there we have this great triangle. So all the sides are the same length. So I'm going to go ahead and take my flush cutter and cut it off. So we have two legs of the same length there. And then I'll grab my chain nose pliers to crisp it up. And there we have the bale. Look how easy that was to make. Then to put it through the piece, you're just going to pick it up. And I like to open it up sideways, just like you would a jump ring. Put your piece on one side. And you have to have it open large enough to put the other side through the other side of your piece. And then I'm just going to squeeze it together. And look how simple that was to do. And you can do this in all different sizes and all different colors of wire. This simple but elegant closed jump ring bale is a great way to finish a pendant. It is much more secure than just a single jump ring. Let me show you how to do that. So you're going to have an element here and grab a jump ring. Open that up wide enough to accommodate your piece. And close up nice and tightly. Get a second jump ring, open that up, and you're gonna put it through right next to your first jump ring. Make sure they don't cross over each other. Make sure you get a nice tight close on that. So there we have that started. Now we're gonna do a second set of two jump rings through the first set. Open that up and go through the first two. And then uh, thread on your closed jump ring here. I've used a really nice thick wire jump ring. It's in a square wire. And your last jump ring, you want to follow the path of the one you just did. So it's going to go right through your closed jump ring as well as through the bottom two. Double jump rings make it much more secure so if one fails, the other one catches. And there you have your beautiful closed jump ring bail. This hammered and rolled wire bail is a really unique way to finish off your pendant. You can see here that it's a roll of wire and the inside is hammered to give it great interest and dimension. So to make that, I'm going to use some 14 gauge wire. This one is sterling and this one is gold fill. You can use any wire that is pure wire without a coating on it because you have to hammer it very flat. So copper would work as well. And we have our element here. Um, for this particular one, you don't want something too thick because you've got this loop that you need to get through. So something thinner works better here. And you need something with a hole large enough to accommodate. 14 gauge wire. So I'm going to take some of this sterling wire and I think I'm going to start with about seven inches, right about there. Then I'm going to take my nylon jaw plier and I'm just going to straighten it out a bit. I feel like that's pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my steel block. We'll move that aside. And we're going to hammer um, about two inches of the wire maybe just over two and a quarter inches. And we're gonna hammer it so it graduated. So we're gonna start at the bottom and hammer just a little bit. So you want the end to get very flat and graduate up to thinner. You can turn around and use the ball peen surface of your hammer to even out smaller areas and give it a nice hammered finish. There, I feel really good about that. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mandrel plier and I'm going to grab the very end of that wire with my mandrel and I'm just going to start rolling it onto itself. And I want to go until the hammered portion starts and it rounds off. And then I'm going to just put my round nose pliers in there and bend it up. And so we have this great layered look. Then I'm going to make a loop down here at the bottom to accommodate my piece, cut off the excess. And there we have we have this great rolled bail. It's really interesting looking. We can just open that up and figure out which side of the piece you want to show. Orient that forward and slide that on. 
close it back up. Using the nylon jaw pliers keeps you from marring the wire, which is really good. And you have your beautiful rolled bale. Well, now that we've made these five bales, we've got our figure eight bale, our closed jump ring bale, fold over bale, rolled hammered bale, and our triangle ice pick bale. I hope you use these going forward in your jewelry designs. If you do, make sure and tag us so we can see your work. We love to see your creativity. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And to get in on all of the wonderful new things happening at Fire Mountain, make sure and sign up for our email newsletter. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.